Hello everyone and welcome to ET Studios and today we are having a look at Microsoft Flight Sim once again and it's been a little while since I was last doing videos and I took a little bit of a break over the uh, Christmas holiday and we're back so it should be great fun. So we're here with the RV7A today. Um, it's a freeware add-on from flightsim.to, I'll have a link to it in the description below and we're just going to be flying around some very cool areas that you may not have seen before we are at the border between South Africa and Namibia right now, along the coast, and we're going to fly up into Namibia and see all the uh, really cool scenery that the game has up there. Most of this is just default scenery, uh, in fact all of it is, so it'll be cool to see how well the game uh, manages to do it on its own, especially with areas that are a bit more rural and the devs haven't really had a look at and polished up, so we'll definitely see how well the game manages to do it in those areas. Uh, this plane is really cool. I'm having some issues, just to point out, with my um, default garments in all of my planes. I don't know if that's just a me thing, or if everyone's having a problem. It doesn't really bother me right now, we're just doing some VFR, it, it, I don't need it. But this isn't working in any of my planes, and I assume it does work, um, because the buttons are clickable, and I can, I can move things but nothing's actually working, even the screen is just is just dead, all the buttons are clickable, but I can't actually do anything, so we're just going to ignore the Garmin, but it should work in general, and it's very nice that they've actually bothered to put it in here. It's a very well uh, detailed interior, I really like it a lot, especially for a freeware add-on, this is pretty decent, uh, the texturing is fantastic on the outside, you can see all the rivets, and the, the point of today's video is essentially a, a showcase of a mod, and then a showcase of some scenery you probably haven't seen before. Usually I'll try and do default scenery that just in a cool location, but I might do some add-on scenery in the future. I might try and run this as much as possible um, and just do some cool flights in cool areas with cool planes. So yeah, this should be interesting. I'm just going to get my actual mixture up. Um, and we can take off from one way to zero. Okay. So we are on the Namibian side of the border, we're taking off to the south, flying over the river, and then flying north from there. Rotor input needed. Nice. Not much though. Okay, took off a little bit late there, we had plenty of speed, but that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to fix that trim a bit here. Nice that they've got the trim over here, it's an electric trim, you just tap it and it'll do it. Or you can use your shortcuts that you would usually use for a twin wheel or anything like that. I like the gauges, this aircraft comes with both a um, like standard steam gauge panel setup like this, or you can get um, a full Garmin setup on both sides uh, on a different version. They're all included in the same thing. And to have a look on the outside quick, we have the um, tricycle gear set up here, but there's also a tailwheel version. Um, and you can fly tailwheel with Garmin and tailwheel with gauges, as well as the, the same with the tricycle gear. So you actually get four aircraft that you can choose from when you actually get this, uh, this mod, which is very cool. On to the scenery, this is the, uh, the start to this river. Or the end to this river, I suppose, technically speaking. There's the Atlantic. And there is some very cool scenery. Very nice area of the world to visit. Uh, I haven't been to this specific place before, but I've been relatively nearby. Um, but not to this area. Very cool. It's interesting that there's an airport on both sides, but I suppose that makes sense um, because if you're trying to fly um, from, well, if you're going to this area on the other side of the border, but you want to fly in, you probably want to fly into the South African side if you're flying from South Africa, so you don't have to go through customs in the airport. You'll probably just do it on the border. Uh, I'm not sure where the border is, but you know it'll probably make more sense to fly in domestically because it'll be cheaper as well. Um, and then that all kind of makes sense, I suppose. But yeah, it's interesting to have two airports with such close proximity, the other one's just over here. Um, 
so very nice. And there's some small towns on both sides. Um, the South African side is a bit smaller. I like the way that you've got the, um, you can see the water kind of change colour towards the edges of the shoreline, that's quite cool. Um, nice details in the sim like that all over the place really, but it's, it's quite nice to see. I think it's done a decent job here of showing what it should roughly look like from the air, so that's quite nice. I'm also trying to fly in areas that I haven't flown in too much, so I can't really tell you guys how it looks compared to real life. I haven't done much flying um, in real life, nor have I been to this area, so can't can to tell you how I can't tell you how it compares, but I can, um, you know, look at it and show you guys what it looks like. So at least you can draw your own conclusions and fly around in this kind of area if you like this sort of scenery. It's very, um, it's a very cool area. We've got a whole bunch of desert up to the north here and then it meets this lovely little area of just a little bit of green where you get the water and then back into desert. Um, it's very cool. So there we go, the slightly bigger town on the uh, Namibian side. I believe that's a railway going off that way. Is it? Not too sure. Looks like it should be, but it might also just be like a a water line or a power line going up that way. Oh, that's way too sharp a turn for, for a railway. Um, and so is that really. So yeah, definitely a, a water line from the river, I would say. Um, or well, that's actually a little lake, so that makes more sense because the river would probably have a bit of salt water up there. Uh, but this lake, probably not. So that may, may make sense, I suppose. So flight characteristics of the uh, RV7, uh, I haven't flown one of these in real life, but uh, it feels quite nice to fly. It's not too responsive in the, uh, in the lower stages of the, of the stick, then you flick it all the way and it doesn't actually do too much, not the massive roll rate. If you kick in some rudder with it, it's a little bit faster, but not really. Um, side slipping works quite nicely it looks like you see I've got full power on right now but I'm just trying to look at it's still turning the rudder isn't particularly responsive which is actually a nice change um, a lot of flights and aircraft have a bit too sensitive of rudders um, but this one's actually not too responsive, so if you kick out the tail like that, it just wobbles a bit. Whereas some aircraft really, like, become uncontrollable if you do that. And then if I have a bit of... I've got a bit of aileron deflection here. Uh, it's not... you can't really see it too well in the animation for the ailerons. But I have a little bit of aileron deflection when I'm turning my rudder like that to keep it straight, which is nice to see. I have to compensate quite a lot. It kicks back in. Compared to even like some of the nicer payware aircraft, this is actually uh, quite nice with the rudder not being ridiculously sensitive. And that uh, generally a problem in Microsoft Flight Sim is the the rudders being way too sensitive. A very interesting scenery over here. There's some um, roads and possibly little um, little mines and things here. I'm not too sure because there's like small towns and then roads into these dune areas and then back into that little town, so I'm not too sure what this area is, but um, I know further up there was that massive um, like diamond area where you could just find diamonds um, back in the day, um, so possibly remnants of that, but I think we're a bit too far south really. Um, it's a little helipad over there, interesting does look like some kind of uh, of mine or processing plant or something here. How well detailed is that hill in terms of terrain depth? Let's have a look. Can't really tell properly from the air, but it looks like it might actually be quite nicely done. Yeah, that hill's properly 
got nice elevation data, which is good. It's just a shame when the satellite imagery has shadows in it, because then you can't uh, you can't differentiate between the game's shadows and the uh, the satellite's shadows sometimes. Right now it kind of matches up, but not really, because the sun's slightly more directly over than it would have been with this image. But if the sun was further over there, then it would work, I suppose. Um, yeah, it is a shame when you've got shadows from satellite imagery, because it kind of messes with your your lighting a bit. More interesting areas. See, that looks like it should dip down a bit, whereas it's a bit more flat. The level of detail there in terms of the elevation isn't really working, but that's alright. Like here, there's little hills and things, but it doesn't actually look like they are mapped too well. I don't know how well this is coming across in the video. It should be fairly noticeable, but you might not know what exactly I'm, I'm talking about. Another little town, interesting. Very small little pockets of civilization up here, but not not very much, and that's the case with Namibia. Um, oh, is that actually a... It's still, it's still gravel. Flight Sim has this weird thing where it'll overlay like a little um, like strip where the, the cars are going to drive, um, and it kind of changes the colour of the road in some cases. You can kind of see it changing the colour of the gravel halfway between the road where they've mapped the actual road in for the cars to drive on. Not that I've seen any cars, but anyway. But yeah, Namibia is... Uh, you can see this road is ridiculously straight. Look at that. It just goes, because there's no point turning. It's just desert. Um, but there's just pockets of civilization separated by huge long stretches of roads. Um, and that's the case with most of it. Some of the civilization is a bit bigger than others. You've got your, your bigger cities, but it's mostly just small towns separated by long roads. But a very cool area. Uh, a nice little plane. We're cruising nice and quickly at 140 knots here with a 75% power setting. And yes, yeah, it's, it's very cool. Let's check on our lights. Didn't bother doing that before. Well, we don't need landing light, but turn on Peter heat as well because we totally need that in the 40 degree temperatures 40 degree Celsius just to point out um, it's rather warm out there but yeah we're gonna fly along it's a very nice day uh, this is live weather so <laughs> it's pretty much always like this in terms of weather it doesn't rain as you can kind of tell um, and then you've got little pockets of wildlife and uh, foliage down here, closer to the water. Interesting to see so much um, next to salt water, but I suppose it works. You've got these little mini um, pockets of water around here, micro lakes large ponds, whatever you want to call them. Very nice wave effects there, coming onto the shoreline. That's quite cool. You can see the waves actually forming and hitting the shoreline. That's nice. Unfortunately, you've also got baked in the waves of the satellite imagery like before. But I think it works relatively well. You can tell what it is, which is nice. Yeah, this is very interesting, having these roads all over the place, but no cars and no civilization, really. Like, what's the point of having a road here? Um, I understand the main road over there, but this one? There must be some reason to come here. Um, but yeah, there's there's not much else further ahead. Uh, I'm going to quickly look at the VFR map and see if we have any airports north of here. But I do that. But I don't think there's going to be anything else out here. We can probably land on the road. Um, it's long and, and straight, so works as a runway. Start putting out some flaps. 
We've got two notches of flaps here, so just second setting there. It really starts to bring in the drag there, so I'm going to put some throttle in, keep it at 60. This is a bit more bumpy looking than I thought it was going to be, um, which shows that the um, terrain mapping is working, which is nice, the uh, elevation data, but not so helpful for landing a plane. We're just going to hop over this next hill, I think, and then we'll try and put it down. Bring up that throttle so we don't stall, there we go. And now we can just bring it in. There we go. Nice and soft. Fairly easy plane to land. And very nice. Flaps go up. You can hear that they're electronic. Nice sound effects. And overall, yeah, I'm quite impressed with the RV7A. Um, and I hope to see you guys in the next video for the next look at some other scenery and a different plane. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. And I have some other flight sim videos in the past that I'll be doing some more in the future with um, VATSIM as well. So if you're interested in that, there's some of that on the, on the channel already. And if you would like to, there is a Discord server in the description below which you can join and have a chat to me and some others in the community. We're trying to grow that as well. So, hope to see you all there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.